Hey, water signs, getting ready to do your reading for September 2019, Love and Romance. Please keep in mind, these readings really are timeless. It's more about the messages and less about the dates of when they're posted. You could watch a, a reading from, you know, a month ago, months ago, a year ago, and as long as it's resonating for you, that's what's most important. So try not to get hung up on dates. I am only doing the elements right now for the month of September because I'm still pretty tired from the summer. It was crazy busy with work. I also just finished a week-long mediumship intensive with my mentor. So I really need some downtime and this is all the energy I have left to give. So bear with me. I'll get back to um, individual signs eventually. All right. So from this pile, this is going to represent what's leading the way for you personally in your life. This pile is representing what spirit wants you to know is leading the way in your love life. This is representing the overall theme in your love life coming up in September and beyond. And then these two decks I'm going to use for your spread. So let's get to shuffling and go ahead and pull your oracles for water signs. Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio for September 2019 and beyond. Water signs. What is leading the way in water signs life? And this is talking about you personally. Forget everyone around you. Forget relationships of any nature, professionally, personally, romantically, or platonically. This is about you. Where are you at mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually? What changes are you going through? What um, you know discord do you have inside of yourself right now? What's calling you or what's kind of tugging at your heartstrings a little bit? What changes need to be made or what is it that you need to be mindful about at this point in your life? So what is going on for water signs? Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio, what's leading the way for them personally? Whoa. All right, that one flew out and fell on the chair, so we'll take it. And what is leading the way in water signs romantic life? Love and romance. This has to do with higher perspective. This is what spirit is trying to get you to see or help you understand. This can be new perspective. This can be revelations and epiphanies. There we go. Oh, you got two cards. All right. <laughs> This is higher thinking. This is maybe even something that you're not totally aware of right now, but you might have seen glimpses of it in your life. So Spirit's kind of trying to wake you up to this. And this is talking about the overall theme for water signs. What is the overall theme right now in your love life? Oh, okay. Two flew out and fell in my lap. That was pretty easy. So let's go ahead and get your spread. We're going to put these aside. We'll talk about them in just a minute. All right, here we go. Water signs, September 2019 and beyond. Love and romance for Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. What's coming in for the water signs? Past, present, future. Those who are single, those who are coupled, and everybody in between. Water signs, love and romance, September 2019, Cancer. Give me a shuffle for Pisces, love and romance, September 2019, and Scorpio. Shuffle a little bit this way. Water signs, Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Love and Romance, September 2019. What's coming in for you? Okay, that feels good. Two more shuffles this way, and then we'll finally pull your spread. Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio, please. Love and Romance, September 2019. There we go. All right. Cut the deck. All right. It's truth time. Let's roll up our sleeves. <laughs> Here you go. Water sign. Oh my goodness. <laughs> 
Seriously? Wow, bottom of the deck, we've got the devil. Oh boy, we've got the magician right behind that and the wheel of fortune. Wow, this is that's good news. Hopefully this means you're getting out of something toxic or getting away from a situation, a circumstance, or a manipulative person. Some of you are coming out of long-term relationships, marriages. Uh, some of you are just breaking up. Some of you are in separation. Some of you are finalizing divorces with this type of energy, feeling very defensive here. Ace of Pentacles, wanting a new start, waiting for a new start. Um, Queen of Swords, some of you could be dealing with a Aries, I'm sorry, Aries, why did I say Aries? With a uh, Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius, or just a speaker of truth. It doesn't have to be a female. This can also be the justice system as well, but it doesn't have to be. Um, Ace of Wands, wow, really, oh gosh, you're, you are coming out in your own reading wanting to... Um, Wow, you're really wanting to take action toward an air sign, offering a cup, bringing something to a close that was very burdensome for you, definitely looking on the horizon, wanting a new start with someone um, and, you know, waiting for your ships to come in. Some of you could be trying to reconcile with somebody that, you know, you had a falling out with before and you were blinded by that situation waiting for the right time here with the two of wands to you know rectify it say something about it uh, confront it whatever that means for you yeah there you go with that justice card definitely wanting to balance something out um, bringing some truth to light here with the moon card wow we've got the emperor right behind that the knight of cups five of wands chariot seven of pentacles nine of swords okay this is very interesting heartache here Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, I will refer back to those on the bottom of the deck if I need them. I probably will, but I'm trying not to take out too many cards. Let me move these over to make some room. This is very interesting indeed. Okie dokie. Now, on the top of the deck, the card that is representing you, Water Sign, is the Four of Swords. Ooh. The card that's representing the person that you're dealing with is the Fool. The card that is representing the situation between the two of you is the Star. And the, in, or the Income. Wow, the Income. That's interesting. Some of you could be raising your income. <laughs> Where did that come from? Um, so this can also be psychic income for some of you, but... Um, the opportunity coming in for you. That is so strange. I said income. King of Swords. Wow. Very, very interesting. You know, some of you could be increasing your coin and having an influx or an increase in income and maybe moving off in a new direction financially, career-wise, or just really working on your foundation, your stability, and your security. Especially those of you that have gone through a divorce, you know, you've got to divide assets and finances and all of that property, things like that. So maybe that was a factor in the past with this double card for some of you dealing with a financial either downfall or financial assets and money accounts, things like that being frozen that really hindered your forward moving progress um, and waiting for things like that to, to be relieved and um, freed from it, especially if a divorce was settled. So you, you might have an uptick in your finances just based on that. And others of you could be um, increasing your career, you know, having a better, um, a breakthrough in your career in some way. What's coming toward water sign from the person that they're dealing with is the queen of pentacles. That is interesting. Uh, Wow, Seven of uh, Swords is clarifying that and the Nine of Cups, oh my goodness. <laughs> Water sign, so some of you could be dealing with an Earth sign here, Cancer, uh, Cancer, Taurus, or Virgo. Oh my gosh, did I just say Cancer, Taurus, or Virgo? <laughs> oh my God, you guys forgive me, as you can tell I'm tired. <laughs> Leanne apparently needs a break because now I'm getting my own signs uh, mixed up. I've been reading tarot for over four years. I am well aware of which signs belong to which elements. Let's try that again, shall we? You could be dealing with an earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo. <laughs> okay. Let's see if we can get through the rest of this reading. The outcome for water sign uh, is the seven of cups and clarifying that is the knight of wands and the Four of Cups. Okie dokie. Let's see here. Wow. This is interesting. This is very interesting um, energy going on here. So before we get into your spread, let's talk about your lovely oracles that popped out for you. So this is representing ooh, 
the uh, what's leading the way for you personally in your life right now is the focus around faith. Believe you are not alone. Spirit is right beside you. Ask for guidance and it will come. So absolutely, if water sign has been going through any sort of difficult period in their life in any way or multiple ways, some of you it is just with relationship. Others of you it was with work and income. Others of you it was a combination of the two. And there could be other stuff going on in your life, you know, family dynamics and um all, all kinds of things that has created a huge shift and change in your life or, or, or the requirement, the need to make different decisions outside of your comfort zone. Feeling the, the sands shifting underneath you and the winds of change in the air. And, and also closing out old cycles and walking away from your life as you knew it to be, right? Um, as, as it once was, now it's starting to morph into something else and, and trying to find your footing. So faith has been, has been a theme here, is a theme, an ongoing theme. This is something that you are relying on. So some of you are really doing your spiritual work. You are doing self-development. You're doing soul development. You're connecting with your spirit team, your angels, your guides, your deceased loved ones. Um, others of you are falling on, um, not falling on, but relying on faith of, of the religious nature, you know, with, with uh, prayers and rituals and things like that. You know, that is getting you through these difficult times, especially times of uncertainty where you're not quite sure where the path is going to lead. You don't know what the outcome is going to be in certain situations. It has left you very unsettled and you have been needing to rely on your faith uh, because that's the only, for some of you, that has been really the only thing to kind of pull you through, especially if everything else kind of crumbled around you. So believe you're not alone. Spirit is right beside you, okay? Spirit is the God of your understanding, your angels, your guides, your deceased loved ones. Call on them, especially in moments of frustration, in moments of doubt and fear, uh, when you feel very disconnected from yourself and extremely worried about the physical world. You know, sit quietly and meditate and ask for guidance, ask for help, ask for strength, and it will come in for you. Guidance will come as well as long as you slow down enough in order to hear it. Um, so that's kind of the caution here too, is that we get so busy in our day-to-day -day lives. We're running around like chickens with our heads cut off, trying to fulfill every to-do list and obligation, you know, in, in our world. And so we get very disconnected from self, from soul and from spirit. And so that's when we start to lose our way. But when you can sit quietly and allow the guidance to come in, even if it is extremely subtle, being very open to hearing it, receiving it, feeling it, you will start to sharpen that um, the ability to tune in and receive it quicker and faster. So faith is absolutely a huge theme for water signs right now. What's coming in for your oracles? Ooh, you've got intention and joy. Well, I like that very much for you. So this is the message from spirit, okay? This is what they want you to focus on. Um, and a lot of you, again, who have been going through difficult transitions in your life, it has, for some of you, been very difficult. It's been soul-sucking, energy-sucking, um, and joy a joy-stealer and, and happiness uh, stealer, you know, just feeling very deflated and, you know, dark cloud and rainstorms and all that. Not, not the kind that you like either. So they want you to try to let go and let God is a, is a saying my father always says, let go and let God, especially when burdens become too big that you just don't feel like you can carry them right now. The stress is too much to bear. The mental anguish is too much to bear. You have got to let go because when we are in situations like that, the, the harder we hold on, the more difficult it becomes and more, the more difficult the situation will become because you're creating energetic resistance to that situation. If you let go and stop fighting it, hand it over to God, let go and let God, put it in God's hands, put it in the angel's hands, whoever it is that you believe in, and just say, you know what, I this is bigger than me right now. I can't carry this burden. I need to step up, step back from it and take some time for myself and just allow the, the chips to fall where they may. You know, just let the dust settle. And so in doing so, in giving yourself permission to pull back and, and really just detach a little bit from your circumstance, you will begin to align with yourself again who you are on the inside, what makes your heart sing, what what brings you joy, what makes your, your soul glow. And when you do that, 
you, the, your creative juices will start flowing again and the things that you're interested will start to bring you happiness and, um, and feeling excited about them again. You know, passion projects and hobbies and nature and anything, anything that, that um, you brought you joy before but hasn't been lately. It's because you're, deta you're not detached from it, you're too far removed from it because you're so bogged down in this devil energy up here. And so they're wanting you to just release, just sit back, let go, let God, f find your flow, you know what I mean? Start paddling downstream, actually flowing downstream instead of trying to paddle upstream. And get in touch with your intentions. What are your intentions? Make a list. Anything that is good for you, that's happy, that's wholesome, that's well-rounded, that increases your well-being, that brings you um, happiness, contentment, fulfillment, that is very healthy for you mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually, even financially for some of you. Write down your intentions and release anything that's opposite of that. You know, start thinking about the life that you really want. And when you get very clear on what it is that you want, you put your intention out there. And when your intention starts to go out there, your the next your your job at that point is to start refusing anything that doesn't align with what it is that you want or what your intentions are. And then focusing on your intentions and taking steps towards those things whatever it is for you in your life will start to bring joy back around and you'll feel the heaviness and the burden lift. It may not cure the problem. It may not bring the solution, but it will start to shift your energy. And when your energy shifts, then that is when you are creating the space and opening up a, a more, um, easy flowing uh, vibration and environment within your life, within your world that will allow that other situation to sort itself out for the best, for the greatest, for the highest good of all involved. So this is very important energy for the water signs right now. Do not lose sight of your original intention. Check inside your heart to see if the path you are traveling fits in with your original hopes and aspirations. If not, take action, take control, and steer your life back on course. This is about taking your personal power back, water sign. So wherever you have given your power away, in any aspect of your life, whether it is to a thing, whether it's to a situation, a circumstance, or a person, it's time to take your power back. And you are in control of your own life. You are in control of your own happiness. You are in control to a great extent of your own destiny based on your free will choices. You are deciding every single day if you're going to live in misery or if you are going to shift that energy and live in joy. So very, very uh, important, putting that faith back in yourself also, putting the focus back on you and really um, cleaning up your side of the street, you know, so to speak, in your life, cleaning up your side of the street, getting rid of anyone or anything that's not good for you and creating space in your life to bring in those things that not only, not only increase your faith, but also increase your faith in yourself, your self-confidence, um, and you know, aligning with your true um, desires and dreams in life, right? So talking about joy, Quan Yin, love and compassion, a time of healing. You are being showered with love and light. Accept this gift. A newfound joy for life will replace your sadness. So that's beautiful. And especially those of you that have been really sad right now, I hope you find this video and you hear this message and it brings you some sense of comfort and relief because sometimes that is the one thing that we need in order to kind of get that domino effect or get the ball rolling to even step towards this energy. Sometimes we're so bogged down in our own sadness and grief that it's like we lose our way because it's too dark and and um, dreary there, you know, we don't even know how to find joy again. And so um, spirit is trying to bring it into your life, okay? They're, your your team, your spirit team is working with you to bring this back around, to remove your sadness and, and find newfound joy in your life so that you can move in a more positive direction that is going to create a more fulfilling life for you instead of one of full of worry and fear. So... Um, they're trying to work with you on that and 
you know, they can only do so much though, water sign. That's the point, is that you have to be open and ready and willing to receive it. And when they do bring opportunities along your path, if you're constantly rejecting those opportunities, uh, then you are telling spirit, telling universe that you don't want joy in your life. You want to stay stuck in your misery and your pit. And so it's time to release yourself from that. This is all about uh, personal freedom from anything that is breeding energetic cancer in your life. The bad kind of cancer, not the astrological sign of cancer. Okay, so what is the overall theme? I love it. Look at these um, illustrations. What does this say? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I didn't even know this was on the table. Oh my goodness, yes, water sign. You're going through transformation in your life and it's a beautiful thing. Your relationship with one another is about to deepen, love conquers and transforms all things. So in terms of love and romance, the overall theme here is that there's transformation going on in your love life with you and a person of interest a love interest, okay? Those of you that are getting out of relationships or you're single right now, there could be transformation going on within you in terms of, uh, you know, um, healing, in terms of a maturation process, in terms of, you know, transforming into a better version of yourself, you know, a ca um, caterpillar cocoon butterfly, okay? And so when, when you are a better version of yourself, then you're going to show up in the world as, as, a better version of yourself and when you do that you're going to attract you know better quality um matches for you right and so so all this stuff of yesteryear here with the devil you know any relationships that you were in before that were toxic and heavy and burdensome and full of deception and lies and betrayal and whatever when you transform your own energy and you ascend higher than where you're at. You're healing yourself mentally, emotionally, physically, psychologically, spiritually. You are, um, you know, maturing. You are coming from a more grounded, safe and secure space. Um, again, caterpillar, butterfly. When you emerge as the butterfly, this type of stuff is naturally just going to fall away from you from your life and when you're vibrating higher and light like a butterfly, I feel like I just want to do this, <laughs> right? And you're just kind of floating around in the air and going from flower to flower and enjoying the sunshine. You're going to bring other butterflies in your life, water sign, who want to flutter around with you. But if you're in this energy and you're still attracting this, then you're going to attract the predators that are going to eat the butterflies. You know, so I don't know what... I don't know. I don't know what eats butterflies around here. I never see them get eaten or killed. They're always beautiful and in their full glory when I see them. So whatever it is that eats butterflies, we don't want that. We want other butterflies for water signs, okay? So this is beautiful. And so those of you that are in a troublesome connection, whether you're in separation from them, whether you're still with them, but there has been some turbulence in your relationship. This is talking about transformation is on the horizon for that. And you and this person is, you're going to, um, deepen your connection, deepen your bond. Love conquers and transforms all things. Love is the strong energy here. So whatever's been going on within your relationship, ego, bitterness, resentment, you know, um, needing to take responsibility for your part in things and them and theirs, you know, a, a humbling of sorts and a needing to surrender and sit down and really be self-effacing and uh, transparent with each other, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Have that honest talk. You know, and then let go of all of this stuff in your relationship with the devil energy that's been bogging you down and keeping you guys stuck in a never ending cycle of toxicity. Bring yourself up into a higher energy, energetic level into a higher, into a higher level of being and loving each other. And when you do that, your relationship is going to naturally be healthier. And that, and the love vibration between you will conquer whatever the uh, problems are. So it's beautiful. It's wonderful. Look at that. I love that. That's wonderful. Um, water sign. I'm happy for you. Here you go. What does this one have to say? Reflection. Ooh. Give each other some space at the moment. Trust and have faith that all will work out for the best. So this is about taking some time apart. Now, those of you that have been in separation from your person for a while, then I'm sure reflection has naturally been going on. Those of you that are actually in, you know, your 
you're not only in a relationship, but you're in a pit. If you're in a pit of toxicity with each other, maybe some time apart would benefit the both of you. So, because when you're just, when you're too close to the funk, it's only gonna breed more funk. You cannot see clearly, you can't think clearly, you can't feel clearly, right? So um, that could be a possibility for some of you and then others of you just doing, taking some time to reflect even if you are still with your partner or living under the same roof or whatever. Because you can do that even if you know, you're know you living with someone. Just take some time for you. Give each other some space though, okay? And it, whatever that means for you, everybody is going to be different. It could be a couple hours, it could be a day, it could be weeks or months, it could be full on separation. Um, or it could just be giving each other space by backing off of the troublesome topic of conversation or the troublesome issue and trying to reconnect with your partner in other ways to strengthen your bonds so that way when you do come back together to talk about this said difficult thing, it's not so explosive and nasty with the devil card. All right? Um, have faith. Look at that. The word faith showed up that all will work itself out. Faith, 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 and faith. And more faith for the water signs. But also personal reflection on self. You know, this isn't about, you know, you're, you're in the right and the other person's in the wrong. I mean, it takes two to tango. So what was your part in this situation? Humbling yourself and, you know, uh, reflecting on that and acknowledging whatever that was is going to make you not only more mature but it's going to make you a better version a higher a higher quality better version of yourself that that you know um is going to be better to be in relationship with than someone who is always deflecting and denying that they did anything you know wrong and they're always blaming it on their partner and vice versa for for water signs um other person very interesting. Okay. So what is going on for you? Wow. Well, basically I kind of talked about it already over here. So we've got the devil energy. We've got the, um, the wheel, we've got the magician and the wheel. So, you know, the wheel is telling me that whatever was going on in the past, because the bottom of the deck is all about the past leading on up into the present. And there could still be some residual energy of this as well as moving into the future. So the wheel is telling me that whatever toxicity, manipulation, dark stuff, twisted stuff, um, immature stuff, whatever was going on in a previous relationship with somebody is coming to a close here. Okay. The wheels of fate are turning. This is a faded situation. The wheel can talk about an ending or getting close to ending it. The world card would really be talking about it's it's you know finishing its cycle, but the wheel is saying that it's it's on its way. Um, you know, the magician can talk about manifestation as well. So on the shadow side, it could be talking about the manipulation, especially uh, paired with the devil here. But this can also be talking about, you know, separating these two cards. This can also be talking about water sign trying to manifest a new beginning in their own life because this just wasn't good for them. So, you know, getting out of a relationship, a previous relationship or a connection. Um, and so wanting to try to get out, up and out of something so that you can, you know, just save yourself from it and, you know, just have a better life, you know, but again, here you are with the four of wands, the seven of, um, the seven of wands and the, the, um, the ace of pentacles. So some of you, like I said, are definitely getting out of a long-term relationship or going through a separation and or divorce. Okay. There could have been some, a lot of defensive energy around this. Absolutely. There could have been fighting and all kinds of stuff with the devil card there. You could be waiting on a payout. You could be waiting on the settlement to come in from the judge or however it works, wherever you live in the world. Um, you know, who's getting what, uh, some of you could be waiting on a payout or, um, I mean, yeah, basically a payout, whatever that is for you, whether it's child support or alimony or half of the assets or half of the retirement or one of the family homes or whatever. So there could be some of that going on here. I'm standing your ground and making sure that you get what is owed to you from a previous relationship or marriage, okay, in terms of assets. Um, so that could be going on here as well. Um, some of you in, uh, you know, who weren't going getting out of a previous relationship, this can also be talking about, um, well, I was going to say some kind of soulmate twin flame energy possibility here. Some of the cards are kind of pointing to it, but it's not extremely strong. 
This could be a connection that you have with someone that has not gone away. You know, you've tried to make it go away. You've tried to move on from them. You've tried to manifest a new beginning. Maybe you've gone out and dated other people. Um, but, you know, and you're defensive toward the one that you're really supposed to be with, right? So it's kind of like that divine feminine, divine masculine. Uh, you know, I'm going to use that as an example. So the, generally speaking, the divine feminine has been the one that's been ready for the relationship and the commitment and planning the future and whatever and the divine masculine has been the one who's been extremely resistant to it and so this has been the ongoing theme for months and months and months in all of the twin flame videos and so, you know, he's been the one that has been absolutely resisting the Four of Wands energy, which is talking about commitment, settling down, celebrating life, a celebration. This can mean marriage, right? Um, reception, things like that. Uh, or just, you know, a long-term commitment moving in together and all of that. And so he's the one that's been resistant to it. So there has been a lot of toxic energy between the two of them because it's like this constant, you know, push, pull, push, pull. And so somebody could have gotten tired of waiting. So they went off and manifested a new beginning for themselves. They're not waiting for this anymore because this person is too stubborn. We do have the emperor down here. This person is way too stubborn. Uh, to work with. There's no compromise, very controlling, uh, not wanting to budge. And so this person said, fine, you can stew in this energy all you want, but I'm going to move on and create a new path for myself. And then you can decide if you want to stay behind mired in the muck, or if you want to, you know, step forward and try again. But I can't promise you that I'm still going to be available when you finally come around. Because again, I deserve more than this devil energy that you've been giving me, whether it's male or female, because, you know, it could be flipped too. There could be a man who was ready for this and the woman was dragging her feet. Divine feminine, divine masculine, it doesn't mean every man is the divine masculine. It's energy. There's feminines out there who are the divine masculine in their relationships. So just depends on, you know, what side of the street you're on. But nonetheless, you know, this person, they, they finally, like, they wanted this with, with, Divine Masculine will say, Divine Masculine wasn't ready, waited too long, dragged their feet, they're very controlling, stubborn, refusing to compromise, refusing to open up, refusing to, you know, um, respect this, refusing to work together, whatever. And so the person said, fine, I'm going to go find my happiness elsewhere. So that could be going on here for some of you as well with this, um, with this combination of cards. It just depends on what scenario you're in, okay, which... Because those are two very opposite scenarios, okay? Now, the interesting thing here is that we've got the Queen of Swords, the Ace of Wands, and the King of Cups. So water sign is showing up, like I said, in your own reading, wanting to offer a cup. Uh, want not, not only wanting to offer a cup, but wanting to take action here. So typically speaking, when the King of Cups shows up in a love reading, that means he is in love with someone. And this is the Queen of Swords, so Gemini, Libra, or Aquarius. And it doesn't have to just be... Um, doesn't have to just be... Um, uh, sun sign. This can be Gem Gemini, Libra, Aquarius, sun, moon, rising, or Venus sign. Um, okay, so just giving examples. So like I'm, I am a air sign rising, but my sun sign is an earth sign, and my moon sign is a water sign, and my Venus uh, sign, my love sign, is a fire sign. So, um, you know, so again, it's just interesting. So try not to get too bogged down and saying, oh, this is only sun sign. You, if you know, you know, your other planets in your chart, or if you're a cross watcher and you know somebody's other planets in their chart, then this can be sun, moon, rising, or Venus. Okay. So nonetheless, this King of Cups is, is in love with somebody that has some air in their chart. And it doesn't have to be. It could just be somebody who is taking on the Queen of Swords energy. So you could be, this. The, for example, he could be in love with somebody who doesn't have any air in their chart, but she's taking on the qualities of the Queen of Swords. What is the Queen of Swords? She is um, detached. She is cold. She is um, not, not that she's not compassionate, but she she's standing there with her sword drawn. And so she wants the facts. She wants the figures. She wants the truth. You know, this is no sh sh no shenanigans. <laughs> I can't even say that right today. No shenanigans and no fuckery. Like I always say in my readings, shenanigans and fuckery. She is not having it, right? This King of Cups is very aware of that. 
and there could have been a period of time here where either this is this is a connection from the past this could be this connection for some of you with the twin flame soulmate energy and so now he is ready to face her he wants to take action here, even though this is going from left to right. This could be her wanting to take action toward him, but typically speaking, Queen of Wands, if you have somebody who's already in this um, energy and this is a, a connection from the past, she's not budging. She's already drawn her line in the sand. She has already, um, you know, basically given what her deal breakers are, what her expectations are. So basically, you've got to be this tall to ride my ride, right? And if you're not this tall, you're not getting on it. Those are the rules in the Queen of, in the Queen of Swords uh, kingdom. And so um, there could be a desire here with this combination that she is interested in a new beginning with said water sign. But she's not going to be the one to make the move. Let, let that sink in, okay? I'm gonna say that again. This combination can be saying that your air sign here, feminine air sign, uh, is interested in having a brand new beginning with this King of Cups, but she's not going to make the move. She's standing strong and proud and stoic in her position. And so it's up to the King of Cups to step forward and offer his cup. Now, the other thing that I'm getting with this combination is, even if there is little to no communication between these two, there is still very much a connection with that Ace of Wands, a divine connection because it's an Ace. And you've got the Ace of Pentacles right behind here. You could have a Queen of Swords who is increasing her money as well. She has walked away from this connect this situation over here, put the focus back on herself and really increased her abundance, prosperity, wealth, career. You know, she's just all career minded, foundation, stability and security. Okay. So she's standing even stronger in her position and she doesn't have to settle. And so the King of Cups can be very difficult to share his feelings. They feel a lot, very intense under the surface, but they may not be the, the most um, communicative or well articulated when it comes to their feelings. Sometimes they can completely shut down and just disappear. Because again, you've, it, it, you know, if it is a Pisces, you got the fish right here, which I find interesting. If you see right under him. So if you are dealing with a Pisces, don't forget Pisces are the fish in the zodiac right? And the cup here has a fish that is diving down into the cup, which I find very interesting because in a lot of tarot decks, the cups have a fish jumping out of it. So if some of you, if you are dealing with a Pisces, don't forget that the fish in, you know, in the Zodiac fish, when they're in the water, they feel the slightest vibration. They're going to get spooked and swim as fast as they can. And so sometimes that's how, you know, a king of cups can be, especially if it's a Pisces. If it's not a Pisces, but you're dealing with a Scorpio, you've got the, um, you've got the devil up here and he could be, you know, again, this could be sun, moon, water. I'm so, I'm sorry. Sun, moon, uh, rising <laughs> water, sun, moon, rising or Venus. Okay. Um, he could be a water sign, uh, you know, sun and well, this is Scorpio water sign moon, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but nonetheless, you know, you could be dealing with a Scorpio here. You could be dealing with a Cancer. But nonetheless, that connection is still very strong between them. Now, it's not to say that this Queen of Swords is a, is a Swords or is one of the air signs. She could be a Queen of Cups. She could be a Queen of Pentacles. You got the Queen of Pentacles over here. So this is what's coming in for you, Water Sign. She could be a Queen of Pentacles who is naturally open, loving, nurturing, wanting to be receptive, wanting to give and receive with you, but she got fed up with this situation and she turned into the Queen of Swords. So, you know, you have to understand that there's so many different possible storylines here, but nonetheless, there is absolutely still very much a connection there. Huge, very fiery passion, um, desire, longing for, daydreaming, fantasy, sex, love, romance, deliciousness, <laughs> all kinds of deliciousness. You know, a lot of uh, tarot readers refer to the Ace of Wands as the boner card. So this King of Cups could be 
not only wanting to offer his cup, but wanting to, <laughs> you know, stand at attention, okay, in more ways than one. He wants to give her all of his attention, and um, he wants to pour his cup all over her <laughs> and, um, and uh, show her his passionate side as well. And so this is very, very interesting. And look, if you notice in this card, the fish is coming out of the cup. So for some of you, you're dealing with somebody who was closed off before. This King of Cups could have been the one who was extremely defensive, closed off, not sharing. Uh, he could have been the emperor as well, this emperor energy. Not sharing, not talking, not opening up, my way or the highway. There's no compromise here. I don't care what you have to say. I'm not listening to you. I'm not taking your feelings into consideration. He could have been a more immature version of himself. But when you've got that fish going down into the cup, this is indicating to me that he has taken the time to go within. And that's why he's showing up as a king now, whereas maybe before in previous readings for you, he could have been showing up as um, a knight or even a page. Now again, water sign, this is you. So I could be talking about you watching this video. Nonetheless, there is a desire here to offer your cup to someone. Or those of you cross-watching, you've got a water sign who wants to offer a cup to you. There's a lot of love here with the king of cups. He's in love with you. Um, or at least there's he's there's a lot of love there and he hasn't totally admitted he's in love with you, but there's also a lot of passion and desire. And so this isn't a flash in the pan type of energy. This isn't like, you know, knight of uh, page of cups with a knight of wands energy talking about player come in, come out, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. This is a guy who, or a male energy, okay, masculine energy, I won't say male, masculine energy, who has done the work, who has gone within, who has really understood what this situation means, and he uh, is making a decision to step in the direction of this situation and make an offer. So I find that, um, you know, interesting. And those of you watching this, you might write me and say, yes, I am the water sign who wants to make an offer to someone. Okay, and those of you are going to watch me and you're going to say, I'm a water sign dealing with another water sign. So, so many people, so many um, scenarios. Now, look at this, okay? So, we're talking about a lot of burden between you and someone else, water sign. Um, and, and this could also be this, this connection that we're talking about here. Ten of Wands carrying a lot of burdens in this connection or relationship. Three of Wands waiting for your ships to come in, waiting for a brighter day, waiting for things to lighten up a little bit. Five of Pentacles being left out in the cold or someone le you leaving someone out in the cold or they left you and Two of Swords being absolutely blinded by this. Some of you could have gotten left out in the cold by this Queen of Swords energy. And you didn't expect, you didn't expect it. And therefore you have been in a, in a state of limbo ever since. You just, you don't even know like what happened. You don't know how or why or what was said or done or, you know, it, it totally froze you in your tracks and you haven't been able to make a move since. But now you're starting to pull out of that energy. The Ten of Swords is talking about whatever burdens has been going on for you is coming to an end because the Ten is the end of a cycle. So this is definitely wanting to step forward here and get back into this passionate energy and this love, watery energy of emotions and step out of the cold, step out of you know being left behind, being ignored, being blocked, being confused. Right, you got the moon right above her head here, waiting for some kind of um, clarification to come in here to understand like where do we stand and what should I do about it. Two of Wands. This is definitely you know waiting to uh, waiting for the right time to to fix this situation with the Justice card. The Moon again. Here we are. You, you some of you could be dealing with a Pisces or Pisces is showing up heavily in this reading. Um, doesn't have to be. You know, with the moon, you can also be talking about Scorpio. And some people say the moon is Cancer. So, you know, really what I find interesting in this deck is that if you look closely, there is a crab here in the shadows of the water. So some of you could be dealing with a Cancer. But nonetheless, whatever happened here, there was something that was going well. And then it flipped on a dime. You know what I mean? And it maybe blew up or there was something confusing or you guys had a rift. You separated, 
you know, it's like everything was going good one minute, then you're not talking anymore. You had a falling out, you had a miscommunication or a misunderstanding. And so now in the, you've got the two of swords and the two of wands here, just waiting for that clarity. But once the clarity came in, now you're ready to, you want to, you're waiting for the right time to balance this with the justice. Okay. You know, having that conversation, opening up communication, again, reaching out to somebody wanting to fix what happened or fix what's broken or bring truth out. The moon card is talking about things that are hidden. This emperor here, some of you could be dealing with an Aries, doesn't have to be. This can also be this king of cups as well. Whoever it is that was in this connection, whoever it was that was very reserved and controlling, they have stuff that they were hiding with this moon card. They weren't being totally truthful. They weren't being forthcoming. Something was going on here with whatever it is. This could be truthful about another relationship. This could be this emperor was the one that was going through a divorce. You, viewer, met him, okay? And he wasn't totally um, transparent about the nature and relationship of his spouse. Like he could have told you, yeah, I'm over it. I'm just waiting for the divorce to be final when really he's still in love with her or him, you know, or whoever they're in love with, you know, whoever they were married to. You know, there could be that kind of stuff going on. There can also be something going on where they weren't totally truthful about money, um, about the settlement of the divorce. Um, you know, maybe they lost a lot and they were too ashamed to let you know that, uh, you know, because the emperor is very proud and very stoic. And, um, and to let other people know that they took a financial hit could be, hard for them. So there's embarrassment that could be going on there. So there could be that kind of stuff on, on a shadow sides, you know, there could be something here that they were hiding. That's, you know, a deal breaker for you, right. Or that's really kind of shadowy and, um, um, drama filled and Jerry Springer, you know what I'm saying? So there could be something like that. This can also be, um, for some of you the, they were hiding the fact that they are in love with you with the King of Cups here. They're hiding, they were hiding their true feelings. They weren't really willing to dive into them because they're the emperor. The emperor, you know, executes the orders of the king. The emperor executes people. The emperor follows through with things. The emperor and the empress are married in the tarot and so is the king and queen of pentacles you know so this is the this is the divine masculine the emperor is the divine masculine counterpart in the tarot and the empress is the divine feminine and so he was going through very much shadow shadow side stuff when it comes comes to his divine masculine awakening Okay, so for those of you that are following the Twin Flame Soulmate journey, he could have been dealing with a lot of stuff that you're not even aware of. This could be stuff from childhood. This could be stuff from previous relationships, you know, stuff that he just didn't even tell you about. Again, very proud, doesn't want to admit his shortcomings, very controlling, my way or the highway. You know, I don't ever want to look like a fool in front of people. I don't ever want to be embarrassed. This is somebody who needs to humble themselves a little bit. Okay, and the Queen of Swords could have done that for him by, you know, delivering truth or laying, you know, down a deal breaker or telling him, no, you know, you're saying that my way or the highway. No, buddy, let let me introduce you, okay, to what it means to be talking to a Queen of Swords. <laughs> Okay, um, you no, know, I don't, I don't work that way. Your way or the highway, I don't think so. Okay, this is either a uh, compromise between us. This is either um, a partnership, or you know, you can get lost. And he may not have uh, been ex um, expecting that, and he was like, "Oh my God." So what does that do? That triggers within him some stuff that he needs to look at. And so now, you know, you could be dealing, again, it could be this water sign who was an emperor energy, or this could be two different people for some of you. It just depends. You got multiple love storylines going on here for those of you that date around a lot and date multiple people at once. But nonetheless, this emperor or whoever is standing in this energy is wanting to come forward and offer his cup. So is this king of cups with his cup. And so um, the King of Cups here could be, could be offering as a page to the Queen of Swords because he could be a little nervous to approach her. He might make a small offer. I mean, the this, this page and the knight are very small offers. But the page is like, can we get together for a cup of coffee and talk? You know, well, can we go for a walk, you know, in the park? Um, would you talk to me? <laughs> 
<laughs> like a small gesture, right? Really, he wants to come rushing in with, with his Ace of Swords energy. I'm sorry, Ace of Wands energy, but he doesn't want to overwhelm the Queen of Swords, so he's going to take it slow. But what he really wants to do is dump his huge cup of love all over her. But he's got to, he's got to feel her out. With the, King, with the Page of Cups energy to see if she'll even receive him. The Emperor is going to be stepping forward in the leadership role because that's what the Emperor does. He's a leader. He rules the land, okay? And, um, or he gets all the, he gets everything done <laughs> in the kingdom. And so, um, you know, he is going to, the Knight of Cups is more about dating. This is like, can we get together for a cup of coffee? This is like, let's go out to dinner and maybe we'll, if that goes well, we'll have another date and another date. Or I already know that I want to date you, so let's try dating, right? Um, and so this is a little bit more of an offer of stepping things up to the next level. But again, he is ready to come clear about, you know, something that has happened here or whatever he wasn't truthful about. And this could be multiple things. He could be telling you about something that happened in his past, and then he could also be opening up to you about his own personal reflection about his life or about his childhood or his family of origin or his parents or what happened in previous relationships and how he's grown from it. So he, this emperor could be stepping forward and trying to show you a new level of maturity. But nonetheless, there is justice that's going to be served here. And, um, and I feel very much in this energy that the Queen of Swords is the one that is stepping back. Right? She's holding space. She's not going to step forward and initiate anything. It is up to this King of Cups slash Emperor or it's up to these two separate people, whoever that is for you. Now, what is representing you is the Four Swords. So Water Sign has been going through a period of healing, flat out. Healing, rest, respite, reflection, um, taking a time out. You could, Water Sign again, if you are this King of Cups or, or you're somebody completely different, there could have been no communication between you and a person of interest. Um, or, you know, absolute no communication. There could be separation with this card. Um, you know, whatever that is, this could even be multiple people like separation from a spouse and separation from someone that you're in love with. Who's not your spouse, you know, whatever it is, or this is just taking time to be alone for a while and just heal you, you know, and, and everything in your life, previous relationships, childhood trauma, whatever it is. So this is not taking any action or you haven't been taking any action when it comes to your love life or when it comes to a specific love interest. Um, now, the person that you're dealing with, water sign, is, is the fool. So some of you, again, you could be dealing with an Aries, but it doesn't have to be. The energy of the person that you're dealing with is somebody who is ready and willing to take a leap of faith in their life. Whether it's a leap of faith toward you because the, the fool is facing your card, or this is a person who got tired of, you know, whatever was going on and, you know, want decided to take a leap of faith in a new direction because if you weren't being forthcoming, if you were completely withdrawn and very much in controlling energy and, you know, not communicating your feelings and all of this, a person won't stick around very long if, an, if you aren't uh, reciprocating if you aren't meeting them halfway. At some point, they're going to get fed up with the lack of effort and the, um, the inability even to, to handle this, um, but definitely the lack of effort, the controlling ways, um, almost out of spite and, uh, and, and, um, one upmanship and ego and all that kind of stuff. They're not interested in that. So it's like, it's either you show up in your emotions and you, you, um, give and receive with me or, you know, I'm ready to move on. Okay. So some of you water signs, if in case you're wondering if you're, if you're thinking about somebody from the past that you want to re reconnect with and offer your cup to, uh, and your, <laughs> and your ace of wands, um, time is ticking here with the full card because the window is closing with this person. You know, they're, if you come around, they might be w willing to take a leap of faith in your direction or with you. But if you're not and you don't come around, they're going to take a leap of faith elsewhere. So it's almost like now it's decision time. It's like decision time, decision time. This person is ready to turn left or turn right. 
They're going to make a decision. They're going to turn in some direction, whether it's with you and towards you or towards you and with you in life or whether it's off in a new direction. And that's what I'm feeling here. So water sign, it's like, um, you know, if, if you are thinking about somebody from the past or wanting to reconcile, you better you be, you be aware that time is ticking here. You better step up your game a little bit. Step up your effort. You need to come out of the four swords energy and actually make effort towards this person because, again, the fool is at the zero. So this is a brand new start in life. Whatever decisions they make moving forward, it could chase, change the course of their life in such a way that um, there's no room for you anymore. So they could take a leap of faith and start dating someone else and fall in love and get married to that person and it, it blocks you out. You lost your chance. They could, you know, move somewhere new and it closes the door. Um, they could, I don't know, start a new career. They could have children. They could whatever. I mean, the fool is all about new beginnings all the way around. You know, and they're traveling light with no baggage. So right now, water sign, they're not tied down. But as soon as they start moving off in a new direction and new opportunities come into their life and they're going to take them because, you know, opportunities only come along so often, then they're going to start to gain some responsibility in their life and they're going to start to get tied down by other things and, um, and you waited too long. So be careful not to wait too long because you're going to miss your chance. The situation between you two is a star, so this is beautiful. Some of you could be dealing with an Aquarius. doesn't have to be. But the star card is not only healing. Major healing is going on between you and a love interest right now. Whether you are in separation from them um, or whether it's somebody that you're currently with, okay? So major healing is going on not only in the physical plane, but most importantly on a soul level with the star card. Soul soul work between you two. You know, with this card going on here, this is absolutely um, a soulmate connection. Soulmate, twin flame, karmic, whatever you want to call it. Okay, you've known each other before. You're working through some cycles from previous lives. Um, you know, if you even believe in that sort of thing. So Whatever it is, is even on a soul level, even if you have been in separation from your person, you guys are doing work in the spiritual world together. When you fall asleep at night, when you dream, when you leave your body, etc., you're seeing your person in the 5D, okay? So if you've been having dreams and all that kind of stuff, it's no coincidence. But nonetheless, even if you haven't been, but you can feel an energetic shift within you and within them and the energy just feels different, it's because there's a lot of work being done um, on a soul level between you two and even telepathically. So that's very positive energy. This is also talking about divine guidance, divine, um, divine uh, intervention between you two. This is also talking about downloading information and inspiration and guidance from the spirit world uh, for the both of you with this card. And this is also talking about a divinely guided connection, whereas the spirit and universe is trying to bring you two back together. So if there is somebody from your past that you have a connection with that it's not over and done with, there's a reason for it. Even if you guys have been in separation, but you can still feel this person, there's a reason for it. And this card is indicating the likelihood of you two coming back together uh, in some way. Okay, whether it's just simple communication to clear the air, whether you come back together and are a part of each other's lives in some way, friends or colleagues or lovers or life partners, whatever that is for you. But there is definitely healing coming in here. So whatever has been uh, burdensome, heavy, toxic, etc., um, especially weighing heavy on your heart that you've needed to heal from when it comes to this love connection, healing is coming in so that both of you not only can become a bigger, better version of yourselves, but when you do come back together, you are coming back together more wholesome, well-rounded, and healed. Uh, and again, better versions of yourself than you were before. The King of Swords is the opportunity coming in for you. So for some of you, you are going to be... Um, um, getting a judgment made by the legal system in, in your country, wherever it is that you live. Um, you know, the, the, the King of Swords, this is a couple of possibilities. King of Swords can indicate uh, legal matters, okay? So judge, lawyers, police officers, whatever, magistrate, mediators, whatever it is, okay? 
This can also indicate to some degree, maybe anybody in authority, like a medical personnel, a doctor who's gonna be delivering results to you. But definitely in the case of, uh, of divorce over here, those of you that have been going through the throes of divorce, uh, there, there could be some forward progress that comes in in the month of September and beyond when it comes to settling that out. So that's very positive. So look forward to that. Those of you that have already gone through that process, you've recently settled your divorce or whatever the case is, um, you know, there's um, could be more to come or there could be some, um, um, you know, discussions with your ex about, you know, executing whatever the orders were. Okay, so that's going on here. Now, the other thing is the opportunity coming in for you. Some of you could be having um, an Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini coming into your uh, into your awareness, into your life for some reason. Somebody who is speaking truth about something that's separate. Um, you know, the, 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 this is the counterpart here, but they're typically not married or anything. So um, in, in when it comes to the tarot. So that could be going on here. This person could be the queen of uh, swords in this energy where what's coming towards you, the opportunity coming in is very serious conversation, okay? So, you know, you're gonna be meeting your match when you try to reconcile with whoever this person is and there's going to be serious conversation and truth coming out. Now, the other, on the flip side of that, the other opportunity that's potentially coming in here on a different storyline is you, water sign, taking on the king of swords energy and speaking truth to whoever it is in your life that you, um, you know, are thinking about or wanting to reconcile with, okay? So that's a possibility there. What's coming towards you from the person that you're dealing with? You have a queen of pentacles here. Uh, Capricorn, Taurus, or Virgo doesn't have to be. For some of you, this is just a wife energy, okay? Um, or a feminine, a feminine wife energy, even if he's a male. So some of you could be uh, dealing, this could be for some of you, the person that you just got out of a, a marriage with. And they... They could have run away in the night. <laughs> you know, it just depends. So many different stories I've heard with uh, with the way that people get divorced and the breakups and stuff that happens and who left who and who, you know, did it with dignified and dignity in class and who did it, you know, sneaking away in the middle of the night. So there could be some of that going on where, um, um, you know, either, you know, you got snuck away from this marriage and now you're happy about it or this person snuck away from the marriage and you know they're happy I don't know there could be some of that going on so that's that now those of you dealing with somebody else outside of that scenario let's say this is the person from your past who has taken on the queen of swords energy and you know she's typically um a queen of um pentacles now again this could be like for me for example this is my sun sign and this is my rising sign so for some of you it could be the same person okay um in that in that regard they are still very much in this energy they're still open and ready willing to give and receive they want to have this type of energy with a significant other they might be guarded when it comes to you though and they may not totally trust you Okay, it doesn't mean that they're closed down to the point where they'll never be that way with somebody. But, um, but again, they need to be able to trust whoever it is that they're going to partner up with. So that could be going on here for some of you. Others of you, you're dealing with a Queen of Pentacles energy who is being secretive about their own life. They're laying low. Um, and you know, secretive and it doesn't have to be scandalous and all that. Just somebody who is, you know, they've, they're, they're, she's working on her career, queen of pentacles, working on her career, working on her money, working on her foundation, her security, her financial future, setting down roots, wanting to set up a home, whatever the case is. And she's not divulging all of her plans and her next moves to people. So again, this doesn't have to be the shadow side. It could just be somebody who's not telling people what she's doing. And it's not because she's trying to hide it, but just because she's so focused, either because she's focused on herself and she's just too busy to talk about it, 
or she doesn't want to tell a lot of people because there's a lot of naysayers out there. And she is very strong, grounded, stable, and secure in who she is. She knows who she is. She knows what she wants. She knows what she stands for. So she doesn't need to talk about her plans with people and you know try to um, and, and have to deal with people's resistance or naysaying or whatever she's just gonna go ahead and do what she wants to do anyway because she's happy she's happy in her life she's happy in her skin she's happy in her legacy she's happy in everything that she's doing so she's living the best version of herself right now and this is you know this is the person coming towards you water sign the person that you're dealing with so that's very good. If this is a person that you want to re reconnect with from the past, she's in a very good place. So it's an opportune time to, um, to connect with her. Okay. The opportunity, I'm sorry, the outcome. This is very interesting. So here we are with this unstable energy, unstable, shifting sands, very uncertain, you know, flash in the pan energy. We got the seven of cups here. Now, okay, here's the, here's the light side of it. The outcome here, seven of cups. Somebody is fantasizing about the other person, whether this is water sign, fantasizing about their emotions, their love connection, and their passion and desire for this person, or water sign, somebody's fantasizing about you. So on the light side, fantasy, um, Neptunian energy, you know, rose-colored glasses, you know, the, the, the stuff dreams are made of, okay? And really wanting to take action on that. What could have been, what should have been. The outcome here, this is a lot of very um, heavy energy throughout this whole reading. This is the type of energy with somebody that you can't get rid of and they can't get rid of you. And so there has been, you know, a long-term fantasy with this person really wanting to rush in and explore what this is because there's a lot of thought and daydreaming about what could have been, what should have been, but what didn't transpire, right? And so there is this immediate desire and this intense sense of urgency as the Knight of Wands to rush in and, and, Again, you got the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups. Take action, offer your cup, and, and vice versa. Because again, time is running out, and you know that the door is closing with this person. And so there is this sense of urgency, because if you don't, or if they don't, there's going to be an opportunity lost. And there's already a feeling there that the opportunity was lost before. So this is absolutely rushing in and trying to save something before the door closes forever. That kind of feeling before the ship sails, right? You better board the train because it's leaving the station, right? So that's on the light side of it. So, so that's very positive for those of you that were hoping for an outcome where action is taken. Somebody is really feeling that sense of urgency well up within them that I better make a move and I better make it soon because I'm going to lose this person and I'm going to lose the opportunity of, of this connection and I'm going to lose an opportunity of what could have been a beautiful life with this person, right? Bringing me all kinds of happiness and joy. Eat, drink, and be merry. This is the opportunity that's there between you and this person. But there was some things that needed to be worked through and still need to be worked through first before you can get here. The thing about it is, is that you two still have a very um, strong connection between the two of you that has not been broken. The fire has not burned out. <laughs> the passion, the desire, the drive, the, the lust, the, the, the yearning for, the longing Oh, you know what I mean? It's like, take me now, <laughs> right? With this kind of energy. And so the reason why is because this is the potential for a lovely time together, a lovely future together, the opportunity for a lovely life together. And if, you know, if you don't step forward and, and do it, then, you know, this is very, this is polar opposite energy here. The opportunity is going to be lost, um, water sign or vice versa for those of you cross-watching somebody towards water sign 
So that's what's going on here. Now, on the shadow side of this, put this over here, this over here, this down here. Um, no, this was up here. On the shadow side of this, so I just explained to you what the light side was. Those of you still struggling in the shadow side, this can indicate confusion, illusion, delusion, lies, deception, etc. These two cards can be play your energy. Somebody who rides in on their horse, they tell you everything they want you to hear, they sell you a pipe dream, they play on your emotions, they know that you're going to fall for it, they get what they want, and then they leave you heartbroken. Um, this can also be somebody who did this to you without the intention of doing it. They, it inadvertently happened, and they know that they messed up with this Four of Cups. They messed up, they blew a good thing, they completely blew it, is an opportunity that um, could be lost forever. And, you know, they've got to put their tail between their legs and come back and face this in order to get the uh, happy outcome. So that's the other scenario here. All right, water sign, we got so much going on in your reading with multiple storylines. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the extended reading. We're going to pull cards from many different decks. going to try to get some more sense of this, what's going on with these people, what action they're going to take, what they're thinking, um, what you can expect coming in. We'll go from there. Thank you so much for joining me, water sign. The link to the extended reading is located below. And we'll see you back here in October. Bye.